Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Well, we mentioned in previous videos, this is the calm before the storm, where the biggest markets in the world enter into a zone that is pivotal. Of course, we have previous resistance and previous structure points that are holding this market up. And it's meant that other markets starting to move. We've got the oil market really getting out of control again and moving back up. And we also have student debt forgiveness. How's that going to end? I'm sure everything's fine, don't worry. Stay tuned guys, we've got a great video today to go through the Jackson Hole Symposium, everything to do with indices, the lead indicators right now, and of course, a special indicator that is generally led to further recessionary kind of periods in the US. There's a lot going on in these markets, but we'll navigate them together. See you soon. Well, welcome back everybody to The Daily Show where we talk about stocks, commodities and cryptos. We'll get started with some big news stories and macro, then we'll get into the charts and we've got some great levels today to be discussing. So of course, the student debt forgiveness order, will this trigger more inflation in 2023? Well, I think it's a bit reckless, frankly. This is not the time to be printing money and doing student forgiveness. We have inflation numbers above 9%. This is historically very shocking and worrying and the world economy is suffering from this. 50% of that inflation is caused by demand. What do you think is going to happen if you forgive debt? People feel a little bit richer. They go and buy things. It just seems absolutely ridiculous. What do you guys think in the comments down below? What about the Jackson Hole Symposium? Well, we all know it's coming up. Of course, here we've got some UBS analyst predictions. I think they're much in line with what I kind of am feeling, and it's very hard to predict these things. We obviously have inflation still incredibly high. We have a labor market that's very, very tight at this stage. And look, in general, this will probably mean that the Fed really moves towards a 50 to 75 basis point hike moving forward, and they'll reaffirm that they're going to have the inflation fighting resolve with probably little fresh insights. Yeah, it's boring. Yeah, I know that doesn't really help us very much. But one thing I did want to mention is I tend to agree with this number. I doubt the Fed or anyone will push that much higher than 4%. If you look at the forward rate yields, this is the ones that go into the future of 2023. Not many of them have ever gone over that level. And that's important because when we discuss this chart here, in general, the Fed has had to, to beat inflation, has had to push interest rates above the inflation number. Whenever inflation's gone over 5.5%, the only way to beat it down has always been to push interest rates above that level. Now, of course, at 8.5%, we'd have to push rates to above 85 Do you think that's going to happen? None of us do. This is the first time in history <clears throat> that inflation may be beaten without pushing it above that number. But still very interesting to note that it's never happened before. And with printing money for loan reductions, that's probably not a great idea. Speaking of issues in the economy, here we have monthly supply of new houses in the United States. Whenever that number's gone above nine, it's generally triggered a recession. And of course, we've seen that number go above nine recently, showing the real slowdown in the housing market. I'm not too concerned about housing. Yes, I believe it will drop in Australia alone 10, 15% more probably before all said and done. But you've got to remember, is that system recklessly debted? That's something you always have to ask yourself. How loose was the lending into it? In general, better than it was back in the GFC, 2006, 2007. Used vehicle wholesale prices, they have also started to decrease, which is again, the demand side. Uh, I still don't know why you touch the chart. I'm getting on this student loan debt thing, but I just don't know why you touch it. Things are looking better, but again, you're starting to say, well, are we just gonna wreck that concept? Of course, during midterm election years, we usually see pullbacks around this period. We've kind of started it at around the same point. Remember in the US, for anyone that's overseas, people are generally away on holidays up until kind of the end of August. We're about to see that point. Part of the reason why September seems to fall in October is due to this phenomenon. Around that 15th of August to pretty much the 15th of October, we generally see the market having a shaky period of time. That's just statistically data-driven kind of numbers. Then we usually see a pullback that happens or a nice pickup. You can see the total normal years and what happens, usually sometimes into November, and then midterm years, which go into that kind of start to mid of October. Will it be the same again? Of course, something to be considering. What's happened here on the markets over the last couple of days though. Let's have a look here at the last 24 hours. So the market kind of rallied in the morning session, 
fell a little bit and ended up slightly positive. We have had a positive tinge here on the short term with a negative tinge on the slightly medium term, like a week out on this channel recently. And that's because when it fell down, which we were you know, definitely covering, of course, we saw it hit that level of structure we saw in today's video. This has meant that markets are starting to pick up a little bit of uh, the more growthy assets again, PBW, clean energy, and TAN, the solar energy, were doing standout numbers on the last 24 hours of trade, 4.63%, etc. Things like staples, which is usually a defensive sector, utilities and healthcare, they were up, but they weren't up by much. Semiconductors were the worst on the day, led by, of course, some of those usual suspects. This is the normal concept we're thinking of right now. We obviously hit peaks in all of these cases to do with the correlation of previous times. We've generally dipped back to the lows or close to the lows or made new lows. So in all of these strongest correlations to previous historical times, the market usually has come back more. You have to expect it at this stage. It just seems like the most logical conclusion to go with. So before we jump into the charts, I'd like to thank today's sponsor of the video, which is Tiger Brokers. Of course, we have here Tesla up. And I always like to think about brokers as are they improving their platform? The good thing is Tiger always are improving. If we look over here, we've got quotes, analysis, financials, filing, news, everything. And you'll also see a little bit more. Well, we're all analysts here. We prefer to find out more information about the stocks and of course, instruments that we wanna trade. If we click on the more, it loads these boxes. Guess what? If you wanna see daily short volume, you can get it here. If you wanna see open short volume, you can get it here. You can get filings, you can get valuations, you can get the fundamentals of a company. All these great charts, they're constantly taking feedback. And yes, I offer them feedback sometimes from members of the community. So if you ever have any, just let me know. They're always open to it. And I think that's one of the things that really defines a great company. So if you're interested in finding out more about the special offers uh, that Tiger Brokers has for members of the community, check out the links in the description down below. And of course, then you can get more information on your charts. The VIX dropped, as we suspected in the previous video. We've been talking about VIX quite a lot this year. 20 is the key level to be watching. And also you wanna watch 35 in the future as well. A fear level is usually 35, a very high fear level. Of course, above that's usually a very quick spike. And 20 is considered where bear markets turn into bull markets, etc. We held that zone, we've ramped up recently, and now the calm before the storm, of course, Jackson Hole and especially Jerome Powell's uh, breakfast speech that we'll be seeing here on the Friday in the US markets. Move over to the US two year. The US two year is poised to potentially break a new high. This is what happens. Markets come to critical zones ahead of critical news. Then they gain liquidity during those events to move to the next level. It kind of enables a movement. We're at resistance, three point almost 4% on the two year. Will we break high? or will we break low? We don't know yet. We'll have to find out what the Fed says. But based on what we're seeing in the markets, it seems to be the markets are kind of pointing towards the potential of the US dollar going down and maybe a little bit less hawkish than maybe the market's starting to price in. Let's have a look at this dollar index. We reported the previous session that we thought the market would come up and then fall back down. It certainly did so. It got past the 61.8 FIB but it went up to the 78.6 kind of area. Of course, if you were shorting in this area, congrats to you. Um, so far, so good on this trade. And you know, there's even potential for much lower levels back into the structure down here of that 107. Where's the stop losses? Above these levels is probably the safer point at this stage. But dollar index still looks weak here. And it's the right setup at the right kind of time with, of course, the white, right types of rejections. Jackson Hole Symposium will change it, but it moves into things like the US dollar yen, another one that we've been pricing up. Similar kind of strategy, similar pricing, a dulling market, a slowing market. It breaks to the low, it pulls back strategically that 61.8 to 78.6 area, and then we've seen some shorting off that zone. Anyone in our private community, which you can always join, seven day free trial in the links down below, uh, you'll be able to, of course, uh, see some of these things. This is one we discussed in the previous session. Another one we've been talking about for a few days is actually the bullish notion of oil. That is, oil looked incredibly strong. This is a spring coming off the lows, a very strong looking pattern. And now we've seen two very strong, nice bullish days. Will we continue to move up? 
We would think at this stage, it could be a little bit of a pullback into a move up. So you could be looking for those types of things, but it's the difference between Brent and US oil. So if you go to UK oil and you look up Brent, you'll notice Brent broke through pretty strongly. Often Brent will lead US oil. And at this stage, it is leading. Where's the target? A lot of people have set around 108 for Brent. Makes sense, good level. Obviously at this stage, it does look like the oil trade is currently bullish at this point. We'll find out whether it can keep holding, but it does look pretty strong. With a weak US dollar, does this mean gold will rally up further? Well, it does seem that way. Gold has formed on the 61.8 retrace of this move and it started to go bullish. I've obviously got longer term aspirations of getting it down to this level. We'll find out whether that does happen, uh, but I am bullish on gold over the medium term next one, two, three months. And we're kind of looking towards gold towards this 1772 zone. If you're watching in the car, hello to you. Uh, I know a few people have said, Tom, you've got to read out these numbers when you're mentioning numbers. 1772, there's a key level of previous supports and of course resistances when it came up and a 61.8 fib of this pull and of course if we took the whole pull that would be slightly behind it so of the last move this is a pretty important area i think for gold there's a lot of correlations with this zone so be careful in here we'd be looking for turnaround opportunities at that point and we'll come back to gold when that occurs does that mean buy it right now I don't really think there's a statistical strong chance on it either way at this point. Tesla in the middle of absolutely nowhere. I wish we could report better than that, but frankly, it's filled both gaps, which was the plan. So we wanted it to fill this gap. It's come back to this zone and it's sitting right in the middle of a trapped range between 950 and 840. Well, what can you do in this situation? I mean, you can put in something like a fixed kind of let's call it volume profile. You'll notice it came up and tapped that level. Nothing really new there. Pretty good take profit in the previous session should you have done it. And it certainly weakened quite a lot into the day. It actually rallied all the way to that 9, 11-ish zone. If you got that, well done. Other than that though, Tesla sits in the middle of the zone. Let's move over to Apple. What's Apple doing? Well, this one's a little bit more interesting. Go here to the one hour, check this out. We've got a tweezer bottom. Now the tweezer bottom didn't quite fill the gap that we mentioned on the previous video, but it did come off. The market's kind of looking like it wants to base and move back up. Remember it moved down aggressively and in many ways it didn't move down with the volume that a lot of people would have expected. When you get these kind of bearish moves, you usually expect a lot of volume to come in. That didn't quite happen in this situation. Something that we'll be focused in on. High yield bonds, slight recovery here, considering yields are going up as well, that's surprising. So again, high yield bonds showing that maybe there's a little turnaround in this market. The DAX, German market, level of support, obviously want to break past some key zones here. Probably want to clear something like a 13,300 for it to show bullish intentions. Next level probably moves towards something like a 13.6. Let's have a look at the US market, see if that finds something for us. Again, NASDAQ stopped at the exact point we thought it would. 12,800, key level, previous hits, 13,000 high. Will we break out? Time's going to tell. If we do break out, what's going to happen? Most likely we move towards those 13,300s. After that point, of course, the real potential of a sell-off comes in. But these are the key things you want to be looking at as a trader. Do you care about this price? You want to get that price but this is the easy money. These levels are the hard, tough trades or the more kind of tight, compressed trades where you're buying and selling the ranges. Different strategies, different zones. These are very quick markets. The market likes to come back and usually allow itself to get a lot of the fair prices. I mean, you can see there's gaps even here on the futures market left, let alone the real market if you look at the queues. Speaking of the real market, we'll go over to the S&P 500, probably the most important one to be watching right now, guys. Check this out. All of us, we always focus on this market and you'll notice we just have so much structure through this zone. We've got pullbacks of the FIB into this area. We've got so many key levels around here and we'll use the futures market to show it up. Remember, always price in your gaps here so you've got those sitting on your charts. Something like this would be a good idea. You'll notice here I've got the whites as the gaps. So these are all the gaps that are unfilled that are left by the market. 
So we actually went straight underneath this zone, this little area here that we mentioned previously. This is that 41 kind of 13 area. We swung it during the European session. So that basically means we came underneath, we took the stop losses that could have been here, effectively a liquidity grab as many people know it as, and then we moved towards that bullish kind of side. Now we fight with the 4162 level. 4162, I posted this on our Twitter, at FX Evolution if you're interested in following. This zone is very important because of course we're gonna have potential sellers here and potential buyers here. Jackson Hole Symposium will most likely get us out of this range. It could go bullish earlier than that though. So I'm watching for bullish kind of intentions here on this market at this stage. Movement up, potential pullback after that point somewhere in here, maybe around that price of I let's say 41.30, 41.35, we'd have to do some more analysis on it at that time. And then ideally move up to fill some of the inefficiencies, the gaps that sit up here at 42.26 and potentially even go as high as 42.60, which will be a very key pivotal area. There'll be a 61.8 fib of the entire pull down. I'll show you guys here. So if you grab that entire pull, you'll notice here you get that 61.8 fib just around this area. And this is going to be a very, very important zone should it happen. So if we get the market bullish up into here, then you're looking for that turnaround story. And we'll, of course, be following along with you guys in the future on that. Not much to report on options for this week. Obviously, we've got tons sitting at 4.30. Those calls are unlikely to make any money. Too bad, so sad for them, unfortunately. Hopefully, you're not one of the ones that has these uh, these calls. And then we've got 4.10 on the puts at this stage, being the two biggest options levels. Max pain doesn't matter as much in these non-third week exp expirations, but certainly worthwhile noting. Bitcoin, what's going on there? Again, fairly solid here on the current market structure. We did see something interesting though. It took the highs here. So on Bitcoin, unless it really needs to make a new peak pretty soon, because when you're looking at this on the surface, could that be that false break and movement down? I'm going to watch and set alerts at 20,800 because if that then goes underneath this level and holds the close, look out down below 19,000 or even 20, um, those levels very likely to get hit. Of course, at this stage, this could all be what we call distribution. Little bit of a kind of movement up, you take out the lows and then boom, goes the dynamite all the way back down. Be careful of that, guys. This is a very pivotal chart that we'll be watching. Interested in crypto, certainly at this stage. If you haven't already, follow us at FX Evolution. And of course, remember the Jackson Hole Symposium is about to start, prelim GDP, 8.30 a.m. Thursday, August 25th. Then on the Friday, we have the core PCE price index and Fed Chair Powell speaking at 10 a.m. Breakfast with Powell. We'll find out what he has to say, or maybe morning tea with Powell. This is going to be a very important session. As always, guys, if you're interested in Tiger Brokers special offers, remember, click the links in the description down below. They've got a whole bunch of special offers for different community members around the world. Obviously, subscribe, smash that like button. We'll see you in the next video, guys. I'm super excited to see what happens next. Bye for now.